to self-pace themselves through the learning targets in my classroom. So at the top of the playlist, I list the learning targets they're responsible for. They have to every day update the um, date completed. So if there's an activity on the left, they have to tell me what day they completed it. Um, that also gives me a guideline for those students working a little bit faster for how long it should take students to get through a unit. Um, I provide extension activities within my playlist that are optional for students that get through the material a little bit faster. I guide them to the extension activities. Um, my students are asked to do periodic check-ins after every learning target um, so I can see that they know the material and I have just created a list of checking questions so they all kind of get something different so they can't go back and tell their partner this is what she asked me. Um, and then I also build in time during each playlist too for mini lessons if they choose to do that. So um, there'll be the activity and like the very first activity asks them draw, learn how to draw a bore model. And so they have two options. They can get a mini lesson from me, um, which most of them have chose that, or they can watch a video that I posted. Um, so they have that choice and then what they'll do is if they would like they can record their notes by hand or digitally type them um, on the note sheet that I formed along with the playlist. On Google Classroom I made a topic called exemplars for students. So if they click the exemplars I've just been slowly like posting things students have done. And I have This one was really cute. So she did a menu, um, the Adams Family Restaurant menu. And so then if you go down, she has her salads, the Kappa Grey Tube salad. It's $18.97. That's the year that that experiment took place. And then she explains it. And then she has the different scientists' burgers. And again, with the dates, and she explains it. And then she kind of goes on to explain everything. And she even did the extensions. The desserts. So she got a four because she did the extension and she did a nice job with that. Um, and so that was an idea. This was a children's book. I've had actually a couple people do children's books which have turned out cute. The Adventures of a Carbon and Mom is probably supposed to say. Um, so it was a sunny day and Mr. Adam was going on a lot right pocket he had six protons. So very simple, but you you can have, like you have to have a deeper understanding in order to simplify it. So um, that was a good one. This student did a magazine. Um, this is like her cover and then she did articles within her magazine. Whoops and they're not loading right now. And then one of the articles in her magazine she linked a video of herself explaining it because she had said um, I feel like I'm just rewriting my notes because she had known that I said you can't just rewrite your notes. So then I told her, well, maybe record yourself explaining things because it'll come across as you understand it a little bit better. And then I've had some board games. That's what this one is. Um, I don't know. I have a couple other things. But this is another. Um, this is Adam. He's an Adam who's made a bigger, up smaller particles, and he is very small. So again, just very simple. And they did a good job with that. So those are just some of the ones.
it because you kind of get to go at your own pace and you can just kind of do it however you want it to. And so you don't have to keep going with the class. You can kind of just do it at your own speed and you don't have to just keep working on the same thing for a certain amount of time. You can just, once you're done with a certain section and understand it, you can just move on again. So you just don't have to stay in the same spot. And it's kind of cool because she has a bunch of worksheets that we do and she has videos on it that's telling us how to do it. But then for the rest of it, we kind of just, we see, we look at what we saw during the video and then apply it to the rest of the worksheet and then we kind of, that's how we get to understand how to do it. So right now for Pichem, she's letting us do playlists, is what she calls them. They, I personally enjoy them. They let you work at your own pace, which is good. I enjoy working ahead. I love science. <laughs> I like the playlists because we're able to work at our own pace. Even though there is a due date, we're able to work at a certain speed, so when we're stuck on a certain part, we don't have to keep moving on. While we're still stuck on that part, we're able to work through it and then move on at our own pace. Um, so we can do like different choice assessments. So we can, you can make like a te like a practice test for your final test, or you can make like a baby book and like make a bunch of these different things. Like you really are just trying to get creative with showing how you understand all of the things. But it's fun to try and take the information that you learn and incorporate it into different activities or like she's I did the magazine cover that she was talking about. Otherwise like my friends have done hey. game boards and one of them did the menu. So it's it's fun to work at your own case. I think it's better personally. Um, I like that there's a very variety of ways to do the final product of a unit. It gives more of a, um, well, I guess it just gives more of a variety, and you don't have to just take the test you normally have to take in every other class. It gives you a chance to show what you know in a different way. Well, we aren't limited to just what the teacher asks us. We can really do whatever we want, and we can make it so we go either more in depth, or we can just do like things that wouldn't be in the curriculum that like is interesting and would show that you are learning from what we're doing. I think, well, mostly instead of her standing up here and teaching everybody and taking individual questions, you can come up to her individually and ask, which I find to be a little bit helpful because it doesn't take as long for her to answer the questions. It's better. I like it. Well, I've learned better because I'm able to work at my own pace and it helps because I, when I do get stuck on something, I am able to work on it with help with a teacher instead of having to come in at another time to have help with it. I think the benefits of using UDL in the classroom are that I think before um, it was Okay, so you have these students who can do this grade level work and you have these other kids. So you, you know, as a paraprofessional, you take all seven of these kids who need to have their tests read to them or who need to have these different supports. So at a high school level, kids don't want to do that because they don't want to look different. Even at the middle school, they don't want to look different. They want to be in there with their peers. So then you would have behavior issues because kids don't want to do that particular model. So what I tried to start doing is create things like um, using Audio Exam Creator where I could read the test. Students could have those, the headphones on. Really if I'm just reading the test, they can go, now they can do that independently. They don't have to leave a classroom. They can stay right there. They can do those things you see behaviors. Um, decrease because they feel like they can do this on their own. That's my favorite part, um, seeing kids being successful in a classroom. Um, it doesn't necessarily maybe look the same, but for them it doesn't. It They're doing, they're meeting the same standards. And I think that helps students. I know the students that I work with and my own child um, 
they thrive when they're with their peers. And so when they're in a regular classroom, I feel like they step up to meet that, um, that level. I'm here and I'm with my peers and this is where I should be and I want to do these things and I want to be a better student. So I feel like they, um, I feel like they step up and they really want to do a good job and they really want to be um, part of the classroom and they want to contribute. I see kids um, answering questions, kids feeling more confident speaking out in class, um, sharing their opinion when they feel like they are um, on the same level as their peers. So I think that's really good for them. They have they reach for that independence and they really want that. So they thrive in that classroom atmosphere when they're allowed to, but they also feel like they're supported. I started, I had an interest in UDL because I have a daughter who is in special ed and um, wanted to learn more strategies about how to support her. I've also been a para in the district for about 15 years. So UDL was something that became really important to me because I saw not just our special ed population, but our regular ed population too. We have those kids who kind of sit right on the edge that need support, but they don't necessarily get it because they're not special ed, but they could benefit from a lot of the things that um, that UDL does. So I read um, UDL Now and got really interested in it, and so I've been advocating for regular ed kids and the special ed population. And in um, the classrooms that I work in, I try to be um, available to all students and work with teachers. Um, Mrs. Johnson and I work really well together because we sit down together and um, look at the standards that we're working on for a particular unit and then we, just, we talk about strategies that are helpful to any student and um, so I'm kind of trying to push that throughout the school. I will talk to teachers and make offer suggestions. Um, one of the things that I've been lucky enough to do the last two years is I have one day a week as a paraprofessional. What I do is um, I'm available at the high school and the middle school to any staff who want to talk about um, UDL options in their classrooms and then I work with them to plan and implement um, different UDL strategies. Maybe they don't know about things like Read and Write for Google or they know about it but they're not comfortable using it in the classroom. I'm that person that can go in then and say, okay, I'll support you while you're giving a lesson. We'll work together to create a lesson for students and we'll learn Read and Write to, for Google together so that they feel like they're supported and they don't feel like they have to try and figure it out on their own, which is very scary sometimes. So they have somebody who, who knows and is fluent in that that can um, help support them when they're trying to support students. So I, I feel like that's been a positive for, um, for our district at the high school and the middle school level. Um, and then just making them feel like they're comfortable and they have somebody that they can come to with questions. And we've had some really great discussions about, okay, so what does this look like for a student who maybe um, they need to meet that standard, but it needs to look a different way and they maybe need a different option. Can they do that? Um, so the example that I use quite often is compare and contrast. Well, if we're in an English class and we will talk, I try to get, have the conversation with the teacher, is, so is your goal compare and contrast or is your goal writing an essay? Because if the goal is writing an essay, then that's what we need to work on. But if the goal is compare and contrast, let's talk about ways that we can show that we know how to compare and contrast. So um, it's... I think it's just having them understand that, yes, we, I have that knowledge base and those are the things that we need to be looking at for all students, what are different ways that they can all do that. And often they're surprised that sometimes I think they think that it's the easier way for students to do things, but I've had teachers come back and say, okay, I had them, I offered this 
this, this, and this. And I was surprised at how many students chose to write to do this, which is write a five paragraph essay, when they could have done something like do a, something on Padlet or create a Google slide presentation. They opted for that, and I said, it's because they didn't need that particular support. They know what they need. They know what they can do. So, yeah, I don't know. That's, I, that's what I love about what I get to do.